In this video, we're going to make a ticking stripe mug rug. So let's get started. So I'm starting out with our mini loom, also the loom I use most for mug rugs because it's the perfect size for one mug rug. I'm gonna be using 8-8 cotton for my warp. So this is the thickest warp string that I have for sale in my shop. And um, it's one I go back to over and over again, especially when I wanna use the warp string as the fringe. I am going to be double warping the loom and for this particular piece, it's not gonna matter how many warp strings you have. So you can do this as wide or as narrow as you want, but if you are gonna make a mug rug, I would say make sure that it's at least three and a half inches wide, probably a little more if you can. So when I double warp this loom, instead of going to the next groove right here, I'm gonna go back into the same one I started with and then that will begin my double warp. I wanna get as many strings onto this loom as I can so that this piece is as wide as it can be. We do want an even amount of strings for this particular one, just because we are going to be weaving over two under two. So we wanna have an even amount of strings. So I've double warped this little loom and I have a total of 32 warp strings and this is a approximately four ends per inch loom. I cut off my tail and I'm just gonna hold this with one hand while I tie this last warp string with the other. Now that I have my warp on, I'm gonna flip my loom over and I'm going to tape my loom down to the table so that it doesn't shift on me while I weave. I like to use painter's tape for this. This blue stuff is always my favorite, I don't know why. I just keep going back to it. And it's just gonna make sure that you can tape your loom down to your table and it's not going to damage the table because it's the type of tape that of course is meant to come off of surfaces once you're done using it without wrecking them. Next, I'm grabbing a piece of cardstock. I do like to double it up so this one is folded over and it's about an inch and a quarter tall, a little bit more than that, but that's an approximate measurement and I'm going to weave this in over two, under two, all the way across my loom. Now we're ready to get started with weaving. I'm using a yarn I haven't really used much before. I just got it and I'm really liking it. It's a wool acrylic blend. It's called Patton's. Does anyone know, is it Patton's or Patton's? I feel like it's Patton's inspired. And I will put links in the description box below. They will be affiliate links. So if you purchase from that link, I will make a very, very small amount of income at no extra cost to you. This is considered a bulky yarn. I don't totally understand how yarn weights work because between a bulky and a super bulky is a pretty big jump. This one is definitely thicker than a worsted weight, for instance, which is a medium weight. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna use this quite a bit actually, but I think two arms lengths on such a narrow piece is probably plenty. And I'm gonna start with the off white. The first thing I'm gonna do is a twining stitch. So I'm beginning with weaving in over one, under one, and I'll do my twining stitch on top of that. If you need a tutorial for twining stitch, I will leave a link in the description box below, or you can click right here to check out that tutorial. All right, so I have my twining stitch in, and now I'm going to do, I think just one row of plain weave, continuing to do that over one, under one, before we switch to over two, under two. And the reason for that is I just kinda wanna add to the stability of the base. Since the warp string is going to be the fringe, I definitely wanna make sure nothing's going to slip out of place. And you know what, for good measure, one more row, because I'm paranoid. Okay, so I've squished that base work down really nicely. I wanna make sure it's nice and tight. And now I'm going to switch to doing over two, under two. This is going to give us more of that tapestry look because we won't be able to see the warp string, at least not really, through the weaving part. I kind of planned this out on paper. Maybe I'll just show you. Why not, right? So here's my my brief plan for what I wanna do here. I've split my grid up to one block equals a quarter inch. So my whole piece is going to be about four and a half inches long. I want the entire weaving portion of this mug rug to end up at four and a half inches. So I'm including this base work in it, which is why I'm gonna also start with the white so that it still kind of looks cohesive in the end. So I'm gonna switch now to my over one, under one, I'm going to be weaving with 
a measuring tape to start so I can figure out how many rows I need to weave that will equal half an inch. So we're still weaving plain weave. It's just that now instead of going over one under one, we're going over two under two. I'm really trying to make sure that I don't suck the sides in. It's, it's really hard, you guys, to make it perfect. And I don't think we need to strive for perfect, but I always try to be more and more conscious of that the more I weave. So let's measure what we've got here so far. And I definitely think that looks, yeah, it's less than half an inch. I think I'm gonna need probably two more rows of that plain weave to get to half an inch. All right, let's measure that again. And I've made it to half an inch. Now, the tricky part about this is I don't want to tuck in a million ends. So I have an idea on how we can avoid that. And I'm just gonna hope that it works. So we're learning together and that's something I'm really enjoying doing on this channel is just experimenting more and it makes it really fun because I think it's helpful to see how someone figured out something that they're making and not just here's how to make a thing. Because I'm gonna be switching back and forth now, all these darker colored stripes are going to be this beautiful kind of deep terracotta color I would call it and you can see that we're gonna be doing a little bit of that followed by the white again, a little more of the terracotta, white, and so on. So I'm actually gonna start this row over here and I might wrap this end around those last two warp strings just to give that a cleaner finish. So I'm only gonna be doing two rows of this terracotta color. So my thoughts are to kind of pull this white yarn up and treat it like it's a warp string. So now that I'm going around this corner with the red terracotta color, I'm going to also grab onto that weft string when I go around. And we're just gonna see if this works because if it does, I feel like that's a game changer because with such a small piece, we don't want to have to tuck in so many ends. Got my two rows of terracotta. I'm just calling it terracotta now. It is darker than that, but that's kind of the vibe it's giving me. So now we're going back to the white and we need to weave the white for two rows as well. So now you can see I've tucked that underneath. It's almost like we tucked in the end, but we just did it while we were weaving. So now I'm going to go ahead and weave two rows of this and I'll do the same thing with the terracotta color that I just did with the white. Now it is a little trickier because this one was coming over, but I'm still gonna be able to grab it, I think. So I'm gonna go over under. So you can see I've kind of looped it. I've looped the white around the terracotta color. So now I'll be able to do my larger stripe with this color. What I was hoping for each of these small stripes is for them to end up at about a 16th of an inch. And I know that's like a very specific and very small measurement, but this section of four rows should hopefully end up to be about a quarter inch. We're gonna move it as almost exactly a quarter inch. So that worked out really well. So now knowing that four rows is a quarter inch, I know that next I'm going to weave four rows of my darker color. We're gonna do the same thing that we were doing before. So I'm gonna push this white yarn up and I'm going to loop my darker yarn around it so that I'm kind of leading it up to where it needs to be for the next section when I get there. So you can see I'm kind of leaving it in the back. I don't wanna pull it out to the front like this. I kind of want it to be more in the back so that we only see this darker yarn on the edge. And I think this is totally working and such a great way to be able to do thinner stripes like this and not have it be so frustrating to finish afterwards with tucking in so many ends. I'm really taking my time on the ends because like I said, I wanna practice more and more trying to make sure that my edges aren't getting sucked in too much. So we're gonna grab that white yarn once again leaving it in the back and I can always straighten it out. I know it's popping up to the front right now. 
So now that's four rows of our darker color. We can go back to the lighter color for two rows. Now I'm back to the terracotta for two rows. So it's a slightly over half an inch, but I think I'm okay with that. And I think we can make up for that with the white yarn by going just under half an inch for the next section. So since we're going to be weaving an entire half inch with the off white, I am gonna cut this end off and that will be what we tuck in. But as you can see, instead of having one, like two, four, six, eight, ten ends to tuck in, we're only gonna have two for that section and that is the darker reddish color. So I'm gonna trim this off. So I did 12 rows to get me a little over half an inch. So to make sure that we're staying in the range I wanna be in, cause this is definitely more than half an inch, I'm probably gonna go closer to 10 rows of the off white so that my entire piece is still gonna end up around that four and a half inches I wanted to. I know this is a lot of measurements, but I figured I would just let you guys know since sometimes we do get questions about more technical things like that. So I'm going a little bit more technical with this one. Okay, so it's actually less than 10, which I wasn't expecting. But basically what I did is I wove six rows of the off-white and then I just measured where are we from the top of this off-white row to the bottom of the first ticking stripe section because basically I wanna make sure each of those sections is about an inch total. So you can see that we've got a, almost exactly an inch right there. So now I can start my next section of the red stripes. Using that strategy to sort of grab onto the other yarns as you go so that you don't have to tuck in as many ends. And if for as long as I've been weaving, I don't know why, I have never thought of doing that, but it worked really well. And I think something that helps it work well in this case is that the yarn isn't super thick, but in any case, it works. Because I started and stopped with the red color on the left last time, I'm gonna switch that over to the right this time. Just so again, when I do have to tuck in ends, I'm not having them all on one side. I just kind of like to even things out a bit. We are gonna like let this come up here and I'm grabbing underneath it with my red. I'm gonna continue the same process until I have four total of these pink stripe, of these red, pink, coral, terracotta <laughs> stripe sections total. So when we end, we're gonna end the opposite way that we started. So we'll do four rows of the over two, under two plain weave, two rows of the over one, under one plain weave, and then a twining stitch at the very top. I finished my section, second section of the reddish terracotta stripes and I ran out of my off-white yarn. So what I'm gonna do here, I ended on the under. What I like to do is wrap this around a second time for a cleaner edge, just like that. And then it also makes it so that the end of this is more in the back than it is just on the side. Squish that down nice and tight. I'm also gonna quickly double check that this red section and this red section are actually about the same. And I think my second one, so it kinda looks like I need to squish this section down just a little bit more so that it matches this one. So you wanna pay attention to that, making sure that the way that you're beating down is even throughout your piece. So I've tucked that little end in the back. I'm gonna grab another piece of off-white I might grab a little more this time so that hopefully I can make it to the top without needing more. So I'm gonna grab three arms lengths instead of just two this time. And I am gonna go ahead and start on this edge because I can go start on the over instead of on the under, which I do prefer. And now I can just keep on weaving. All right, I'm at the very end of this mug rug. So I'm going ahead and doing my four rows of the over two, under two plain weave. 
And then after that, I will do two rows of plain weave with over one, under one, and then my twining stitch on top of that. I just finished my twining stitch and now I'm going back to make sure that it's all nice and straight. So I am using my tapestry needle for that so that I can sort of push down or push up certain sections until it looks straight enough to my eye. I'm not measuring or anything, I just am kind of eyeballing it and deciding when I think it's good. <laughs> All right, so now we're ready to flip this over and tuck in all the ends, which is nice and easy on a plain weave piece like this. So I'm gonna slide out the cardstock just because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna remove the tape so that my ends don't stick to it. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring all the ends from the front of the piece to the back of the piece. Now, this is one of those pieces where it is definitely reversible because as you can see it looks exactly the same on both the front and the back because I did everything from one end and not the other I'm just deciding the, the back is the back <laughs> tucking in ends on a really compacted plain weave piece like this is nice and easy I have a smaller yarn needle this one is just metal and it's just gonna be skinnier than this getting this through all of these little channels would be really difficult so I'm grabbing onto this one and I'm just gonna weave it in, and by weave I mean just kind of stitch it in to a number of rows. I have two, four, six. That's just a random number that looks good to me, so I'm gonna go with that. Now, leaving my needle in there, I'm gonna show you that from the front, you can't see anything. So I've only grabbed the loops on one side. Now here you'll see how this one really truly could be a reversible piece. The only thing that's gonna be more noticeable that this is the back are gonna be the very ends up here where we wove over one under one. But once I cut this off carefully, not cutting anything except for that end I just tucked in, now you can't see the end of it and you can't see it from the front. So it's fully disappeared, which is great for something like a mug rug that might get flipped from one side to the other. Now those are the easy ends to tuck in. The ones that are slightly more challenging are these ones that have the over one, under one plain weave mixed in there. So I'm gonna grab this one first. What I'm gonna do with this particular one is just bring it down into this side channel. We don't have any other ends to tuck in over here. So that'll work just fine. You can double check that you've only grabbed loops from the back, pull that through and you don't wanna ream on it. You just wanna pull it through gently and cut off the end. Now I'm gonna tuck in the rest of the ends. All right, so I have all my ends tucked in, and so you can see that there's a couple that are a little bit visible, but it's not too bad. So it is still, in my mind, fairly reversible, but the back is always gonna be a slightly messier than the front, which looks really clean. So I'm gonna cut this off my loom. I like to use the edge of the loom here. You can't quite see it, but this edge here as my straight edge to cut on. So I'm gonna cut this end off first. And then for this other end, all I'm gonna do is eyeball it. You can draw a line if you prefer, but I typically just eyeball this to be similar to the other end. And I can always trim it up a little bit later if necessary, but that's looking pretty decent. We're almost done. The last thing I'm gonna do is I just grabbed some cardstock that I have and I'm gonna use that when I brush out the fringe just because I do find that these, this is similar to a cat brush, um, but this is an Unfettered Co. rope brush. But I do find that because these are so, they're just like metal spikes essentially, like a metal hairbrush, that it could scratch your table. So I always like to put something down to protect my table. And I'm just gonna carefully brush out that fringe, which is actually our warp strings that are is becoming our fringe. And I think fluffing it out like this just makes it look a little bit nicer than this. This looks really kind of too stringy to me. <laughs> And then the very last thing you can do, you can't really see it on the white, but you can kind of see it when I put it over top of the table. There's a little bit of fluff from brushing out the fringe. So you can just take your scissors and just carefully run them along the very edge of your fringe if you would like to sort of cut that off so that it's a bit cleaner in the end. 
Now for all those who want to know the exact measurements of my little mug rug in the end, it's about three and three quarter inches wide and with the fringe included six inches long. All right, you guys, the mug rug is all done. Let's have a look at the final piece. I love the way this turned out and you can add any colors you want. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one next.